What's going on guys? Here to talk about the Pentax K3 Mark III, a camera that I really wanted to love, really was excited to use it. So many great uh, attributes to it, but when it came to crunch time, it just didn't perform the way I was hoping it to be. Anyway, before we get into all that, I do want to talk about the plus points about this. I do want to thank the uh, Rico Pentax distributor here in Singapore for allowing me to test drive the camera and the lenses. I'm not paid or sponsored for this. These are my thoughts and my thoughts only. Let's get into it. Okay, this is the first time I've ever used a Pentax digital camera. So I'm coming in this with no bias, no preconceived notions, no negativity whatsoever. Reason I'm saying this, I know the Pentax community is a very passionate community and they are they can be quite you know they stand up for the products they believe in and i respect that and i love that but some of the things i'm going to say in this video may not be to your liking or you may not agree with it but these are my experiences okay all right so let's talk about my initial experience when i first got the camera out and i picked up i absolutely fell in love with the body and the design and the build quality it is a very robust camera. The ergonomics are great. I have large hands. It feels really good in my hands. This is an APS-C camera, 25.7 backside illuminated CMOS sensor. ISO 100 up to 160,000, one over 8,000 for the mechanical shutter speed on this. It has electronic shutter as well as image stabilization. It's got all the bells and whistles of like a mirrorless camera, right? But it is a DSLR and it's an APS-C camera but this is built like a tank. It feels good, the buttons feel good, the layout's fantastic, the dials feel really nice. The f I mean, nothing feels inexpensive or cheap, or it feels like, it, it doesn't feel anything but a premium, solid camera. I've heard this about Pentax cameras, and when I held it in my hands, I get what people are saying. Got it, turn it on. Beautiful display, 3.2 inch display, large, visible, could read all the menus. It's touch interface, love it. The menus were quite understandable. I've never used a Pentax menu system, but I quite I figured out where everything was at relatively short time. It wasn't like other camera systems where you need a dictionary or need a, you know, a, a tutor there with you. I sort of got most of it. Great, happy with that. Put an SD card in, popped on a lens. By the way, I got two. The 77 1.8 limited lens, it's an older lens. Ton of chromatic aberration, but Great fall off, great bokeh. Got the 1685 DA HD lens, 3.5 to 5.6. Newer lens, slightly slower in the aperture, but it's very sharp, very good performing zoom lens. Anyway, popped the lens on it, took a shot. Holy cow, the colors. The colors looked so good. I get why people talk about Pentax colors. The skin tones, the reds, the greens. I mean, it just comes alive, right? I get it. So build quality, really good. Ergonomics, really good. Design of the camera, really good. Menu system, good. Colors, good. Features, good. All right, we're rocking and rolling. I'm happy, I'm excited. Let's get this camera out and let's take it out to shoot, okay? We did that. So I went on a Sunday afternoon with my friend KC. We went and just kind of did a nice chill, kind of walk about, shoot things. And you know, it was around two o'clock in the afternoon. And this camera performed great. Great colors, as I mentioned before. Focusing was good enough. I love the, the that sound, that mirror flapping sound in the DSLR. There's just something, it's, it's retro, but at the same time, it's got a nice sound to it, right? And I was happy with the images. Yes, I was using the 77 millimeter a lot of the time, and yes, the chromatic aberration is very bad, but it is somewhat correctable in Lightroom, but it's something, I was even told about this lens anyway. They said, look, this is not the best lens to test on the Pentax K3 Mark III because of this, but I wanted a prime lens and something faster than the, the zoom, so this is what they had available, okay? So, fair enough, no problem at all. Try the zoom, liked it as well. Very, very sharp, really good colors out of it, very good autofocusing, very happy. All right, so fast forward a couple weeks later, was asked to do a photo shoot for a friend of mine for Hugo Boss. It's gonna be sportswear. It was supposed to be in the gym environment, action, dynamic, you know, capture, uh, him doing a workout. My friend Alan's got like, a, he's got very uh, tan skin. So he's, uh, I thought this would be great for that because does skin tones really well. Colors of the clothes are gonna pop. Let's rock and roll this bad boy, right? I go into the gym, assess the lighting situation. Lighting is ample enough. There's plenty of lighting. Um, we even got daylight uh, coming through the window as well because we shot in the afternoon. I'm good, right? That's where things fell apart, my experience with the K3 Mark III. 
first and foremost, metering. This was having a hell of a time meter. It, sometimes it was overexposed, sometimes it was underexposed, and it could just literally be within a couple shots in the same location. It was all over the place. So I was constantly having to change the metering to sort of, you know, reevaluate. ISO is very aggressive in this camera system. It wanted to go to the max ISO no matter what, even if it didn't need to go there. Okay, some cameras are like this. I've experienced this before in my past. So I sort of, you know, changed the ISO. I brought it down. I forced it down. I brought my shutter speed down a little bit. I was, you know, I stayed around 200 to 400 for the most part. If I need to go a little faster, maybe around five. But I really wasn't that much, you know, considering. Um, even I was like one over 80 at times or one over 100. I mean, I just was trying to get in, you know, just enough to capture action, but at the same time, keep the ISO low. But this camera likes to really use ISO a lot. Okay. Um, autofocusing, continuous autofocus was hunting. And I'm like, why are you hunting? There's plenty of light. There's plenty of contrast. There's plenty of things to focus on. Why are you hunting like this? But it was hunting. Okay. So I tried various different focusing modes and I tried different settings and I still was getting a lot of missed shots. Shots that I would get with most of the camera systems, I was missing on this and it was frustrating me. So I did a soft reset, started from scratch and I was still missing shots. Now here's the thing. Then I was using, if I thought I got the shot, I would use the rear display to see if the shot was in focus. But the rear display doesn't have a really good resolution to it. So while it's big and it's bright and it, you know, I mean, you know, for the menu system, it's, you know, good. When it comes to images, you really don't know if you nailed focus 100%, you know, unless you get onto a computer or another device, right? So when I'm showing images to people and they're like, how does it look? Is it sharp? I'm like, yeah, it's going to look sharper on the computer right now. This, this display is not the greatest. They're like, oh, okay, 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 okay. And that's a little bit embarrassing. Anyway, um... In the optical viewfinder, because I tend to use the optical viewfinder more, um, the focus points are black. And if you're shooting in something that is more of a room that's gray or has different color walls, sometimes it's hard to see the focus points. I was trying to find a way to change it to a different color, maybe because some optical viewfinders are red, some are black. This is black. I couldn't change the color, at least I couldn't find it. And it made it very difficult to find out where the focus points were going because it's kind of fluttering around and you're like, where are you focusing at? I want you to focus face priority. No, didn't get that. Okay, fair enough. Did I, even when I put in that area, I want to go somewhere else. Okay, fair enough. I went to single point autofocus. That helped out a little bit, except obviously in an in a optical viewfinder, you have a limitation on where your focus points can go, but I compensated for that the best I could. Okay. I got some shots in focus, but unfortunately, because of the ISO performance, I had to rely on topaz denoise, topaz sharpening to sort of rectify this situation. I mean, it is what it is, right? But I was really, I was really disappointed in the camera's performance on this. And I'm like, it was doing so well for me when I was outside and, you know, and in really good lighting. And this is still decent lighting, you know? I mean, it should be doing well. So anyway, we left the gym, we did shots outside, right? He was doing shots walking towards me in this kind of lime green shirt. I thought, okay, continue. let's do tracking, let's knock this out, shouldn't have any issues, right? Wasn't nailing focus, wasn't holding focus. Uh, so I had to rely on old fashioned photography, step, step, pause, fire, step, step, pause, fire. I mean, I get the shots, right? And luckily it's a friend of mine. I can work with him and these shots are for social media. They're not going in a magazine or on a billboard. So pinpoint sharpness, it wasn't something that I was really, you know, it wasn't of the utmost concern. It just had to look sharp, you know, quote unquote, look sharp, right? And it, I was able to get that. But my experience with this camera was as such that after I was done with it, and I know I had to do this video, I had to do this review, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't like to talk negative about a product. I don't, but I need to be honest if I wanna do this right. I couldn't recommend the K3 Mark III for professional work. I couldn't. 
And I'm sure there are photographers out there that are using it and are probably getting some good shots. But for the stuff that I do, which was fashion, which was a little bit more dynamic and movement and things like that, I get a better hit rate out of a medium format camera than I was getting out of this. This is an APS-C camera system that should be able to hold up to that or even best it. And I wasn't getting it. This could be the lenses. Fair enough. I only got two lenses. The distributor doesn't have a lot of Pentax lenses available for testing because they don't carry a lot of stock because there's not a lot of people buying Pentax cameras. So that could be an issue. Um, I checked if it was firmware. Wasn't firmware issue. I, I think this camera shines in very good lighting conditions. It shines when you're doing slower photography. Video, decent, nothing to write home about. It does it, but it's not something that I'm gonna really wax lyrical about it. It's not gonna be the creme de la creme out there. It will do video, but this is not a video camera, okay? But as a photographer's tool for work, I couldn't recommend it. As a hobbyist camera, if you love Pentax, you love the colors, you are okay with the quirks and understanding the, the shortcomings of this camera, by all means. But it's a 2000 US dollar camera. 2000 US dollars. Granted, build quality is fantastic. Features rival some of the best out there in terms in its category. But the Fujifilm X-T4, bestest camera. The Sony A6400, A6500, bestest camera. I would rely on those cameras far more than I would rely on this when it comes to professional work. This is just me, you may disagree, but this is just my experience with this camera thus far. So as much as I wanna really love the Pentax K3 Mark III for the build quality, the colors, the features, and a lot of things about this camera that I like, when it comes down to the performance, it's not quite there yet in my personal opinion. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Pentax K3 Mark III. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you own this camera? Did you come across the same things I did? Did you come across something different than I did? I would love to hear from you guys. With that, uh, like this video if you would like to, subscribe if you'd like to as well. That'll help out my channel quite a bit. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you in the next one.